Applique does take a little time. I do like to applique. I like hand work better than piecing, actually. Again, I'm not fast. I just I enjoy the process, and I'm not usually. I won't do anything that has a deadline to it. I've I've done that, been there, and I hate it. So I don't do that anymore. Always around me, I like to have beauty. And I think it goes back to the farm. The woods, the hills that folded into each other, the hedgerows at the sides of the fields that were full of these big, gorgeous old Dutch elm trees. I spent a lot of my time just looking uh, I don't think I was thinking very deep thoughts, but a lot of my time just looking at that beautiful place that I lived in. And I th think that I just, in my soul, developed an appreciation for beauty. Beauty in the places I live, beauty and to some extent the clothes I wore because as soon as I could when I got up in my 20s I was sewing clothes for myself because even though I had a job then I wasn't making very much you know women didn't make a lot back then I my first marriage failed and I brought my youngster back to the farm because I, I couldn't afford to support myself so we were not near stores. We were not any place where I could go around and catch the latest sale and, you know, try to dress myself or my daughter cheaply but well because as some people could because I was not where I could do that. So I made clothes for her. She did reach a point where she her taste in clothing developed, and it was not mine. <laughs> she threw a fit. She refused to wear that dress. It had bubbles on her shoulders. <laughs> not her thing. I always had a notion that I might really like to sew on quilts. But I didn't have the time. I was working. My husband was, wasn't well. And eventually the time came when I did have the time. I think I was in my 50s then. And so around 1984 or 5, I made my first quilt. And it's like been love ever since. I've just, it's been an obsession with me. That is a standard building block in the quilt field, a nine patch. And you may cut, cut the strips, sew them together, and then cut them apart, and then rearrange, pick something that you think will look good together. And sew them together and you get this. Do not. You, you're going to. You're going to defeat yourself if you if you try something too intricate to begin with. You're going to say, "Oh, I can't do this," and when in fact you can if you just give yourself a break. It was uh, my own home, my my uh, community I lived in, and the church I went to, and that was it. You know. Uh, and because I had always worked in fabric and just love the feel of fabric, it's, I guess you could say it's my medium. Uh, and when I once began to quilt, the, uh, and as time went on, you know, the quilting was catching on more and 
there were more fabrics available that were just gorgeous. So at some point we we call ourselves Faberholics, but then somebody else uh, presented the idea that you now we're collectors. Some people collect old toys or whatever. Uh, we collect fabric, and if we don't use it all, that's okay because we just like looking at it, <laughs> feeling of it, petting it. We like the feel of fabric and the look of fabric. It's an addiction. Oh, look at this gorgeous stuff. Oh, I love it. Isn't that pretty? I can just look at it and pet it. The endless possibilities of what you could do with that fabric, the, the designs, the, the way you could take one design and, and, and the way, depending on what fabric you used or how you turned it, it could look totally different from someone else's quilt with the same pattern. It's there in me all the time. I want to, I've, I've got one, more ideas than I can have time to, to make. So I, I'm glad to get up in the morning to think I can get to, to my work table and I love to sew. Oh, as soon as I joined the, the guild and put my quilts up there. I mean, I was happy just to show them, but then they started winning awards. This is my most recent prize winner. I got that uh, ribbon at Paducah. It took me almost five years on and off of quilting to make this, this particular quilt. And my friends were all quite excited about it and when I told them that I was going to make the effort to enter into the quilt show in Paducah and when I told them it had been accepted they were all excited and they called a local tour bus tour company and they got up a whole bus full of people to go down to the show. I had my own cheering section. I got second prize and I almost I couldn't believe it when they first told me because these quilts come from all over the world. It's absolute best quilters in the world. And I got second place. So I'm really quite proud of that. Gosh, I forget I made some of these. That's the one, one of the ones I love best. It's a little quilt that I'm quite, quite proud of because my mother made these, embroidered those little penny squares in 1930, before I was born, uh, when she had a little time on her hands, which of course after I was born she didn't. Uh, and she was, I think she was 88 or 89 when I asked her if I could have those squares that I could make into a quilt. And I, I love that thing. I'm almost always the kind of the one that stood in the background. I don't think there were a lot of pictures of her during all those middle years. She was darned awful cute when she was older, though. She was almost 100 when she died, and her, her skin then was as almost free wrinkles as you could ever want to see. And let it cook on me medium wall for, if I say, at least 45 minutes. And then you can add your vegetables all cut up. Did I say vegetables? <laughs> I'm getting as bad as my mother. <laughs> get my tongue all twisted around. Oh, God. The older I get, the more I look and act like my mother. Well, not entirely. She was such a recluse. But then, you know, that was mostly because she couldn't hear anything. When you can't hear anything, you can't participate in the world. 
I used to feel really put out when I'd take all the trouble and travel five hours and 300 and some miles to go visit her. And she'd hardly, she might say hello and then she'd go and take her book and start reading. I came all this way to see you, now you're just reading. And she said, but it's what I do. So you can see I've been at, at this a while too, but I'm scared to death of not having anything to do when I sit and watch TV, so I'm, I'm just tickled to have a nice project like this. And when this one finishes, I'll have, I'll have one already lined up in my head to start a new one. Do you see that trait in your own children and in your grandchildren? I do. That's your question. <laughs> I do. Um, one daughter is a builder, but she's, she's a, an interior designer. She has a wonderful eye for making homes better making them, th them beautiful from what they were. The youngest girl actually absorbed m more than I ever thought she did. She likes to garden. I like to garden. There again, you make beautiful things in the garden. Two grandchildren I love dearly that seem to have, in their own ways, gone the artistic road, the creative road. They're, they're not just takers, they're creators, and that pleases me very much. I have one very large quilt out now to be quilted by a commercial quilter. It's way too big for me to try to hand quilt, and I, I don't know where I'm going to put it. I'm running out of room, because that doesn't stop me. <laughs> I keep on making more. I'm hoping that my grandkids will, or somebody will give them a home when I'm done. Someday I may, if the Lord would just let me come back after I die, I could take some of my fabrics and keep making things.